Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Welcome to Islam, the way of life. A brand new series from Ikra Bangla. Presented for you young viewers of Ikra Bangla. And we hope you join us in our first episode. This is our another episode of this amazing series for you guys. I'm going to be your regular host, Abul Hasnat, and I hope you enjoy uh, these great series that we've got with you. As usual, before we start on this show, I'd like to begin with some Quran recitation. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim فكوني واشربي وقري عينا فإما ترين من البشر أحدا فقوني إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فلن أكلم اليوم إنسيا فأتت به قومها تحمله قالوا يا مريم لقد جئت شيئا فريا يا أخت هارون ما كان أبوك امرأ سوء وما كانت أمك بغيا فأشارت إليه قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم ما شاء الله that's some um, beautiful recitation of the Quran well as, as I've said earlier Abul Hasnat I'm your guest and I'll be your host throughout this series and I'm joined, joined back by some of, my, some of my guests I had from last time but before I introduce them just to remind you again what we'll be doing throughout these series we'll be looking at the seerah which is the biography of the Prophet and in the last episode I showed you and I'll show you again one of my favorite books the sealed nectar al rahik al maktoum beautiful book that tells the seerah some of you Ikra Bangla young viewers will be looking forward to reading this in the few years, few years some of you are ready to read it now some of you may have read it alhamdulillah this is an amazing book and I always recommend this on the biography of the Prophet but we'll also be looking at other things we want to be talking about some of the hadith that we pick up from um, pick up from the seerah how the hadith that we can pick up from our everyday life we're going to be looking at morals and manners and akhlaq we want to look at all of these things we also want to take some time to look at nasheeds maybe we can sing some nasheeds maybe we'll sing a nasheed today You'll be in for a surprise if we do, inshallah. But before I do any of that, I'd like to introduce my guests for today. So I'm going to come all the way over to you on the far closest to me. Introduce yourself. Tell us your name and how old are you? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Omar and I am nine years old. MashaAllah. Over to my far side. Young man, introduce yourself. Tell us your name and how old are you? Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. My name is Suleiman and I'm eight years old. And my young guest in the middle. Are you Adam and you're four years old? MashaAllah. So I have with me today Omar, Adam and Suleiman. MashaAllah. So these guys are going to help me tell the story today. For those of you that remembered our last episode, what we spoke about was the birth of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we went into his biography and we spoke about his birth. But let's give us a quick recap actually on that birth. Um, Suleiman, you were there for that episode. Um, what, do you remember, and I'm going to test you now, what day was it that the Prophet was born? 
The day that the Prophet Muhammad was born, people think it was Monday. Very good. And um, Omar, who gave his name? Muhammad. Very good. That was a tough one. But yes, we said that his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, gave his name. And we spoke quite a lot. I'm not going to go back into that today because we've got a really exciting um, episode today to do. Because one thing we did pick up on, what was the year of the birth of the Prophet? Suleiman. Back then, people didn't know what the, the birth of the Prophet was because they called the year an incident. Very good. And Omar, which incident tells us about the year of the Prophet's birth? The, when elephants were attacking Makkah. Very good. So it's going to be the year of the elephant. And that is important for our episode today because we are looking to talk about the year of the elephant. Why was it called the year of the elephant? Is there something special about that? Let's find out in today's episode. Bismillah. So, I think I'm going to ask my guests. And why do I ask my guests? Because I, I believe that most of you young Ikra Bangla viewers out there, you probably know about the story of the elephant. So, I'm pretty sure you know it. And I want to hear how you guys tell the story. Because I can tell the story all day long. Unfortunately, something I'm very good at. But I want you guys to have a go, inshallah. So, Let's start. Um, who's going to go first? Who wants to say the very first part on the year of the elephant? Suleiman, I'm going to choose you. So, tell us, why is it called the year of the elephant? Because one time, a bad king called Abu, um, that's, uh, was um, attacking the Makkah and he was uh, determined to do it. That's right. So, a king called Abraha, who was from the, the, the region of Abyssinia, but lived in Yemen, decided to attack the Kaaba. Yeah? Okay. Um, Omar, tell us a bit more about the story. Abraha was, was, determined, to, was to, determined to attack Mecca and destroy the Kaaba. And how was he planning to do that, Omar? With, with an army of elephants. Wow, with an army of elephants. Um, a very tricky question I'm going to ask you, Suleiman. Um, are there elephants in Arabia? I think they are... Yeah. I think Omar is nodding the answer. Are there? No. So where did these elephants come from? Yemen. Well, they were in Yemen, but where did the elephants come from, Omar? For those of you that are looking just as puzzled as Omar and Suleiman, and hopefully on the screen will come up, you will see, if you look at the map, you will see that Africa and Yemen, that south side, is actually only separated by the sea. So the elephants came from, at that time, which is called Abyssinia, which is nowadays known as Ethiopia. The elephants were brought across. Now remember I said Abraha was an Abyssinian, so he was an African king or an African leader and he brought the elephants across from Africa so he brought a lot of elephants and he planned to use these elephants to destroy the Kaaba just as Suleiman said I want to take a break I want to do a trick question I, I'm going to play a little game and I want you guys to join in okay um, and this is my favorite game and you'll see why at the very end um, I'm going to say who can make the noise of a dog go on then Suleiman what noise does a dog make Woof, woof. Okay. Who can make the noise of a cat? Adam? Yeah. Adam did a very quiet meow. <laughs> yeah? Um, who can make the noise of a duck? Mm, quack, quack. Omar said quack, quack. Who can make the noise of an elephant? <coughs> Suleiman made um, a foot sound. <laughs> did you guys hear that? <coughs> That's a good try. He said, <coughs> can you make the noise of an elephant? Oh my, how about you? Can you make a noise of an elephant? That was quite quiet, but I want you guys at home to practice this. Ikra kids, try to make the noise of an elephant. Let me help you. This is how I would do it. Did that work? Yeah. Try that at home. Anyway, let's get back to our story. Enough of playtime with me. <laughs> so, Abra had prepared Lots of elephants, okay, and he begin, began to march them towards Makkah. Omar, tell us a bit more. Tell us the name of what, um, one, of the, one of the elephants. Uh, 
uh, one of the lead of the elephant was named Mahmoud. Very good. Suleiman, carry on. What did they do with Mahmoud when he got to a certain distance and wouldn't move? To a certain distance, the the elves, the elephant suddenly stopped. But wow. somehow they uh, uh, they just forced it to move. That's right. Abraha's men, they the elephant stopped at a certain distance and would not want to go any further. And Abraha's men had whipped and hit, and they were very horrid to the elephant. Some say they hit the elephant so, much, elephant so much to move forward and the elephants were bleeding, but the elephants would not go forward. Do you know why the elephants were not going forward? Oman? Because Allah did not want the elephants to destroy the Kaaba. And so the elephants were scared of Allah to destroy the Kaaba and would not go forward. Yes, Suleiman? I'd like to add to that because there were little birds in the sky that ah, were Ah, we're just coming to that. Okay. So the elephants refused to move, but somehow the army men somehow still managed to get them to move eventually. Eventually, but in that bad state. And then, Suleiman's going to tell us the next part. Then there was little birds in the sky holding a little rock. Very good. And, and Omar, they were just what happened with those down. rocks? What did the birds do with the rocks? Were they juggling them in the sky? The <laughs> birds actually threw them uh, at the elephants and the army men. And so, so, so Abraham and, and his men, they, they got burned to, to death. Yeah. And, that's, and that is how Allah stopped these elephants from storming from Yemen to the Kaaba to destroy the Kaaba. Didn't Allah stop it that way? So, thank you guys. I really enjoyed this turning story. And I, I'm, I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed that story telling too. And again, our Ikra Bangla email is across the bottom. If you want to come on out on this show and have a go and telling some of these stories, we would love to hear from you. So please get your mums and dads to send us an email and you can join us on this show. So yeah, the, the, the Allah had the elephants had refused to move forward, but then it was still moving, being forced to move forward by the army to go and destroy the Kaaba. And at that final moment, that was another sign from Allah. Allah gave, the, gave Abraham's men the sign that, look, I'm not going to let your elephants move. Still, they were determined. And so Allah then gave them the final punishment, which Allah sent all the birds, Ababil as they referred to, and all the birds flew across. They had stones in their mouth and the stones fell like it was raining stones and this scared the elephants made the elephants run away and the stones they were said to be burning and the stones burnt through the skin of the army men and so the army men had to run away and it was said that Abraha didn't even make it back to Yemen on his way back the stones had burnt him so much he died on his way back so Allah made him have a humiliating death um, and that's why it's called the Year of the Elephant, isn't it? I want to say a bit more about the Year of the Elephant, but I think I want to take a break from telling the story because I have a question for you guys. Um, Omar, is there a surah in the Quran that, took, uh, that refer references the Year of the Elephant? Um, yeah, the surah is called Surah Al-Feel. Surah Al-Feel. Al-Feel, Al surah, the, 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 the chapter of the elephant. That's right. Well done, Amor. Um, Sunaman, um, I'd like to hear your recitation today, and so will our Ikra Bangla uh, young viewers. Would you be kind enough to recite to us Surah Fil for us? I'd love to. Inshallah. Um, so, Inshallah, we're going to get some recitation from Sunaman. Um, Sunaman, when you're ready, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, get, get started, okay? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأسهاب الفيل ألم يجعل قيدهم في تضليل سيصل إليهم وأرسل وأرسل إليهم تير نبابل تضميهم بجارة من سجيل فجعلهم خصب مقول ما شاء الله صدق الله العلي العظيم ما شاء الله ودا thank you سليمان for your beautiful recitation of سورة الفيل yes so that is the story of um, the year of the elephant. Now, there's a few things that I'm going to add. I'm going to add to um, what these young, young men have uh, narrated to us. I'm going to add a bit more so you understand um, about a bit more about the year of the elephant. Now, Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
he was involved in the negotiations with the Abraha. When the Abraha wanted to storm the Kaaba with the elephants, Abraha came and confiscated some of the camels of Abdul Muttalib. So Abdul Muttalib was very annoyed um, at this. But most of the people in Makkah had now hidden away that, oh no, this great king is coming, this great Christian king is coming to destroy the Kaaba. So they hid away. But Abdul Muttalib, he was very annoyed. When he found out that his camels were taken away, Abdul Muttalib went up and challenged the Abraha. And he said to him, which was amazing, he said to him, the house of Allah belongs to Allah and Allah will protect his house. But why have you taken my camels? And so Abraha saw what was a very confident grandfather of the Prophet ﷺ. He saw Abdul Muttalib was a very confident man. And he said, okay, this man is so confident. Give his camels back. And he told his army to give his camels back. And then he looked at him and you know, he asked, are you not going to protect your Kaaba? And Abdul Muttalib reminded him, Allah will care for his Kaaba. And it was amazing that it was so true that Allah had, because Allah protected his own Kaaba using the Ababil birds to drop the stones. So there's so many other things that we hear from that. Now, a lot of people asked, where, how did we know that the Prophet ﷺ was born in the year of the elephant? There is a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said that he was, um, well, another, sorry, not the Prophet ﷺ, another Sahaba spoke with other people because the people said, okay, the people asked this other Sahaba, who's older, you or the Prophet? And the Sahaba said to them, the Prophet ﷺ is bigger than me but I am older than him. And then he goes on to say, he remembers seeing the manure, the poo of the elephants still in Makkah. So this is how he refers to um, knowing that he was born in the year. This is one of the hadith that tells us that he was born in the year of the elephants. Um, guys, I want to ask a few questions to you because I, the year of the elephant is an amazing year, but I want to know what do you think we've learned from this year? Um, from, from well, from the story of the elephant. So, let me let me start with you, Omar. Um, tell us one thing that you learned from the story of the elephant. You learned that you you just need to protect your own stuff, not other people's stuff. That's brilliant because Allah will protect Allah will protect other things, won't they? Yeah, that's very, that's a very good thing you learned, Omar. Um, Suleiman, what did you learn? Saying the same thing as Omar. There must be more things that you've learnt. Um, do you do think you it's a bad idea to try to destroy anything that Allah has taught, uh, Allah has given us in this world? Is it? Is it a bad idea to destroy something that's yes, very important to Allah? Yes, but sometimes Allah has gave things to us. Like, once if Allah wants us to eat, but... Uh, his, he created chickens. It's fine, it's fine if we kill them. And as we say Bismillah all, all over them. It's fine if we kill them. Because Allah wants them to kill them so we can eat. That's right. So Allah has given different things to us for different reasons. So Allah has given us chickens for us to eat. And he's given us the Kaaba as a focal point for worshipping. Isn't it? Okay. And Allah had given us elephants to do things for us, as well as to be a beautiful sight. Not to use to destroy the Kaaba, isn't it? Yeah? Okay. Um, a bit more, actually, something that we should have referred to, you know, does it, do you guys know why Abraha wanted to destroy the Kaaba? Okay, Suleiman? They wanted the, he, him to destroy the Kaaba because he wanted people to worship him, even that he wasn't even a god. Nearly. Not quite the answer, but you're nearly there. Adam, do you, do you, do you like elephants? Yeah? Yeah, our Adam loves elephants. Well, the Abraha, he built a great, he saw people going to visit the Kaaba regular. And he thought, why are they going to the Kaaba? Why don't they come and, come and visit something I built? So he built a great big church because he was a Christian. He built a great big church and he said, I hope everyone comes to visit my church that's bigger and grander than the Kaaba. But unfortunately for the Abraha, which got him angry, which is why he went to destroy the Kaaba, 
When he built this church, nobody wanted to visit the church. People still went to visit the Kaaba. And there's a bigger story to it, it's because the people were still told by Ibrahim salam, to do Hajj. So the people will still go to Hajj every year. But the Abraha never understood this. And he's like, why are they going to Hajj? Come and visit my big church. And one day, some Bedouins passed his big church and they said, oh, we need to use the toilet. One of them went inside and um, used the church as a toilet. This made the Abraha very angry, which is why he said, I would go to destroy. <laughs> and it's funny, isn't it? I hope you guys find that funny. He built a big church to challenge the Kaaba. But instead, Bedouins walked past and used it as a toilet. So it's, it's, it's very funny. Right, one of my favorite nasheeds actually tells us the story of Makkah, the story of Ibrahim, the story of the elephants storming and the birth of the Prophet um, And that nasheed is called Mountains of Mecca by Zayn Bikka. Do you guys know that? Yeah? Let's have a go. I want you Ikra Bangla viewers at home, you young viewers at home to join in with us, inshallah. We're going to try to sing the nasheed of Mountains of Mecca. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the day that Abraham passed your way And he was instructed by God to build A house of peace where people will pray And they will come on every knee Come on and out of every ravine For the purpose of praising Allah For glorify Allah On the day that storm from the sky fell Destroying an army determined to break The house of Allah that Abraham built O oh, mountain of Mecca, how was the dawn On the day that my prophet Muhammad was born How did it feel knowing he was to be The last and most beloved of all Rasul of Allah, Nabi of Allah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. I hope you guys at home joined us in with that. But isn't it amazing that the, the lyrics there? Let's have a quick look at these lyrics um, um, and how the Mountains of Makkah song relates to the life of the Prophet. So at the beginning, Zayn Bikr says, Mountains of Makkah, what can you say on the day that Abraham passed your way? And he was instructed by God to build a house of peace where people were praying. So we know from this that Abraham, Abraham salam, built the Kaaba. Question, which is not in the song, who helped Ibrahim salam, build the Kaaba? Suleiman. Ismail 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 Who is Ismail? The son of Ibrahim salam, and also another pro prophet of, the, of Allah. MashaAllah. That's so true, yeah. And they built... They built so then after they built it, Abraham, Ibrahim salam, and Ismail salam, taught their people to do tawaf and to do it. So we've actually had Hajj and doing tawaf around the Kaaba since the time Ibrahim and Ismail. Salam. Okay, and then in the second part of the song, it says, um, O mountains of Matka, what can you tell of the day that stones from the sky fell, destroying an army determined to break the house of Allah that Abraham built? What's that talking about? So, Omar? The year of the elephant. Adam, was it about the elephants? Do you like elephants? I know you do. Eh? And Suleiman, um, what does it mean when he says, on the day that stones from the sky fell? It's when the birds dropped the burning pebbles from their mouths. That's right, yeah. And at the very end, it says, oh mountains of Makkah, how was the dawn on the day that my beloved Muhammad was born? How did it knowing he, know, 
And how did it feel knowing he was to be the last and most beloved of all? What does it mean by he's the last? Omar? He, that he's the last prophet and messenger. MashaAllah. And will there be any prophets after Prophet Muhammad no. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No. No, no. no, not even one single one. SubhanAllah. Guys, thank you so much for helping us tell the story today of the year of the elephant. And thank you for the nasheed. I hope you guys at home enjoyed, um, enjoyed today's episode. Inshallah, the next episode, we're going to move on to the next segment of the life of the Prophet. And we want to look at a few more, a few more maybe hadiths or morals that we want to talk about and a few good deeds. And inshallah, we should have some videos as well to look at some good deeds. So um, that's, that's everything. That's me summing it up for today. Um, inshallah, please remember the story of the year of the elephant. Remember how it's so important for us to remember to worship Allah by the, um, to worship Allah and not to not to be horrid to the creators of Allah like elephants. So many things to learn of today. Please enjoy them and we look to see you in our next episode of Islam, the way of life with Ikra Bangla. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.